Jordan with 43. Malone is doubled. They swat at it and steal it. Here comes Chicago. 17 seconds. 17 seconds from game seven or from championship number six. Jordan. Open. Chicago with the lead. Timeout, Utah. 5.2 seconds left. Michael Jordan running on fumes with 45 points. At the end of the game, you got to get it out of his hands. He's beat you so many times. You watch Jordan play, Doug, and you know that at the end of the game, he's a killer. This was really the play that hurt Isaiah because they scored so quickly. Michael got in there and scored within four seconds. And what and what happened was Michael doubled back. You're going to see he's in the play. Look where Hornacek is setting the screen. Michael never clears, so Malone doesn't see him. He comes from the blind side and strips him. So three crucial plays here by Michael Jordan now as he gets Brian Russell with a quick crossover. Look at Brian Russell slips, and Michael pulls up and buries the shot to give him a one-point lead. That may have been, who knows what will unfold in the next several months, but that may have been the last shot Michael Jordan will ever take in the NBA. Watch Jordan's left hand here as he gives Russell the push. The referee can't see that. Jordan frees himself up for a clean look. The greatest thing about Jordan is he has all the tricks. That's why it's so difficult to guard him. If that's the last image of Michael Jordan, how magnificent is it? I don't think you can put it into words, Bob. I mean, what he's done here in this fourth period, you see the 16 points. He got about a minute's rest and had to come back in. And Scottie Pippen has played a gutty, gutty game today, but still plenty of time here for Utah to try to score. But that's what Jordan is so smart at with his brains. He rested on defense so he would have enough energy down the stretch to perform. All right, 5.2 seconds. Utah down one. Coach? Well, you've got to, you've got to do one of two things. You've either, you've either got to get the ball to a guy where he can attack the basket. Utah loves to run a play up at the top where they wrap a guy to the corner and then pin down and catch at the top. You know if Malone gets it, they're probably going to run at him. Stockton and Hornacek have made key shots their entire career. Stockton, Hornacek, Antoine Carr, Carl Malone, and Brian Russell. If they score, there's a game seven. If they don't, for the second straight year, they go out in six. Stockton. Harper's on him. Behind the screen. Harper got a piece of it. It comes off. The Chicago Bulls have won their sixth NBA championship, and it's their second three-peat. When you lose by this narrow margin, speaking of the Utah Jazz, there are so many things to look back on. But the Howard Isley three that was taken away in the first half will eat at them all summer long. Jackson and Jordan, perhaps for the last time. Chicago 87, Utah 86. Jerry Sloan showing class, trying to shake hands with each and every member of the Chicago Bulls who won two out of three here and two out of three in Chicago. Statistically, especially in terms of shooting percentage, Michael Jordan has had better games. But when you consider at age 35, the games he's played this year, the grinding minutes he's played, and Scottie Pippen being all but incapacitated tonight, and the fact that they're on the road, and the fact that the odds would shift to Utah's favor for a game seven. Yes, MJ Rose again.
that before. I told you that. He no longer needs accomplishments to prove his case as the greatest player in NBA history. He just adds to it. And if this is the final chapter, what a way to close the book. I tell you, Bob, as you look at Scotty Pippen there, I remember all Scotty ever heard about was the migraine headache and that he couldn't play with pain. Well, today, they could not have won this game without him. Just his presence being out there. He made some big shots. He fed the post. He did all the little things for Chicago, and his numbers aren't going to show it. But Michael, once again, with the heroics, the unbelievable plays. But his sidekick, Scottie Pippen, was there for him when he needed him. And I'm watching Michael Jordan hug his mother right there. Such a great player, such a great person. Everything that this game is about, the goodness of it, he represents, and what he's done for the game of basketball and for this Chicago Bulls organization. All of us as former athletes are very thankful to 23 and Red. Michael Jordan is as great a competitor as sports has ever seen. He also has an uncanny sense of theater. And as he makes his decision, he'll think about the fact that he could not ask for a better punctuation than this. He accepts a victory cigar from Jerry Reinsdorf to not only hit the winning basket, but have it be the last shot he takes this season, maybe the last he'll ever take in a Chicago Bulls uniform to win the game and the championship by a point. You know, Bob, it's interesting about Michael Jordan. He's a guy who has nothing to prove, but lives his life every day as, he, as if he has everything to prove. That's something about his greatness. He's, he's an unbelievable athlete. One more look at a shot you'll be seeing hundreds of times if you're a basketball fan. You'll see it dozens of times on the highlight shows tonight. Stockton gets rid of it. It's short. Harper had a hand in his face and maybe even got a small piece of the ball. I, I thought Stockton had a great look right there. It was a well-executed play. Stockton and Malone, and that's who you want taking your last shot because he's made so many big shots for Utah. You know, my heart goes out to Stockton and Malone because those two, more than any other two athletes in this era, really deserve a shot at wearing a championship ring. A shot can hardly come much closer than that without going in. For the celebration, Here's Dan Roberts, the PA man. And now, please direct your attention to center court for the presentation of the 1998 NBA Finals MVP and the Larry O'Brien Championship Trophy. It is now time to make the 1998 Championship Trophy presentation. Joining me up here are the chairman, Jerry Reinsdorf, Vice President Jerry Krause, Head Coach Phil Jackson. And to make that presentation, here's the Commissioner of the NBA, Mr. David Stern. The two best teams in the NBA this season were the Utah Jazz and the Chicago Bulls. These two teams in these finals wonderfully matched and motivated, treated the world of basketball to NBA basketball at its heart-stopping best. To both teams, thank you, but to the Chicago Bulls, the 1998 NBA champion, and a team for the ages. Congratulations to this team, to this organization, to its fans, and to these great players. All right, Mr. Reinsdorf. Chicago Bulls fans all over the world would like to know, are you going to do everything you can possible to bring these guys back here to try to do this all over again? Well, let me first of all say that on behalf of millions of Bulls fans all around the world, it's an honor to accept this trophy. It's only unfortunate that we can't have co-champions because this Utah Jazz team is just the greatest team that we've ever played. Two years in a row, they took us as far as you could, ta you could take anybody. Winning six, in a, six championships in eight years is unbelievable. It's a tribute to a great coach and his staff, great players, Scotty and Michael, an unbelievable performance by Scotty and Payne tonight, Jerry Krause and his staff, just unbelievable. And on behalf of 
millions of Bulls fans all over the world. I can only hope and pray that Michael and Scotty will come back and defend the championship one more time. I take that as a yes. You are going to try to bring them back. Jerry Krause, you have to be very proud of this team. I'm so proud of these players and the staff. And this is for the fans back in Chicago, the greatest sports fans in the world. And we're just so happy. We're going to celebrate. Celebrate safe, guys, and we'll be home tomorrow morning. All right, Jerry, let me ask you. You do everything you can to bring these guys back. Well, you know, tonight all I want to do is celebrate and have fun, and we're going to, we're going to talk uh, later on. But this is a great occasion. And what Jerry said about the Utah Club, Jerry Sloan and, and, uh, and Scotty Layden are special people, and, and this is just a great organization, and, and it's somebody you, uh, that you're proud of that you can be with. All right, Jerry, let's, let's talk to Phil Jackson. Once yes, again, I'm on. Yes, once again, another journey to the top of the mountain. How is this one different from the other five? Well, I'm on. we had to fight our way through this one. This is a, a real struggle for us this year against overwhelming odds. Maybe not as talented as the last two years, but they had a great heart, hearts of a champion, as Michael has said. They won it. All right, you will celebrate tonight. Are you going to come back? Are you Gee, gonna... that's a great question, Amon. I'll dodge that one right now. Thanks. <laughs> All right, Phil. All right, once again, it is now time for the 1998 NBA Finals Most Valuable Player Award. And once again, here's the Commissioner David Stern. Big surprise. Six championships. Six MVPs. Michael Jordan, get over here. You grace us with your presence. You've contributed mightily to our league. And tonight you gave one of the singular performances in the history of the NBA Finals. Thank you and congratulations, 1998 NBA Finals MVP, Michael Jordan. but somehow I have the feeling that this one is more special than all of them. Well, let me say hello to my wife and my kids at home because they desperately wanted to come. I didn't want them to come here today because I wanted to focus on the game, but I wish they were here to help me celebrate. I know they're there cheering and I can't wait to get home, but to the Utah fans, you guys are a tough bunch to play in front of. You guys came out with a lot of loyalty and respect for your team. You made it really tough for us. Uh, we really, after losing game five in Chicago, a couple of us dread coming back to Utah because we had to deal with the fans because of the energy that they bring to the game. But we had no choice, so we had to come in and play our best. And you guys made it a very competitive finals, and you know it's very worthy to win this. And I, I think of all the championships that we won, this is the toughest. It doesn't get any easier. But at the beginning of the season, this was the goal that you set out for. How wonderful was it to make this into a reality? Well, I tell you, when you start the season, I'm pretty sure every team next year is going to start with the focus of finishing and winning their last game. We started with that focus. It was a long road, a lot of different tasks and little bumps in the road, but somehow we made it. And I think everybody who looks at this year is going to have some lot of, a lot of gratification and understanding and a lot of dedication. There were a lot of times during the course of the season that people doubted the Chicago Bulls, doubted that you'd be able to come back and pull this off. Even during this, uh, this final series here, people doubted you. How did you guys stay so confident? Well, I mean, this team is, is, is one. Our leadership is strong. Our leadership is, is very positive, very determined, and it filters down to the rest of the players. And we never let anybody gave, give up. You know, we, we believed in it, and, and we kept coming for it. All right, I've asked everybody if they're all going to come around to try to do this again one more time. I would love for that to happen. I think that's something that's going to have to be determined over summer. All right. Congratulations, Michael. Congratulations, Chicago Bulls. Let's go over to Jim Gray. All right. Thank you very much, Ahmad. Tonight, one of the truly gutty performances in the finals by Scotty Pippen. Scotty, how badly were you hurt during this game? I was hurting pretty bad, you know, to start the game off. I was able to get a dunk when I came down. The pain just sort of built from that point, and every time I tried to run, I was getting spasms. But I knew I wanted to come back and try to give a better performance in the second half, so I just tried to take advantage of that little bit of time before the half and, you know, see what I can do. And I came out the second half, and Chip wanted to give me a little treatment, and... I took the treatment, and I told him from there I was going to just try to gut it out. You know, I felt like that my presence out on the floor would mean more than just sitting in the locker room. Initially, you didn't think you could come back, and then the miracle happened there at halftime. How much did you revert back to some of the things that had happened to you in the past, and you knew that if you gutted it out this time that it could change all of that? Well, I, I knew I was going to come back the second half. I have to correct you on that. I knew 
but I just didn't know how much I was going to be able to give. Although I knew I wanted to just hope that the team could stay in the game, keep it close, and if I could come back out, let my presence be known out on the court. Now, Scotty, you were in tears after the game. Was this your most difficult championship, and why the tears this time? Is it maybe because you feel it's ending? Well, I think they all have brought tears to my eyes, but this was so difficult because you know, I felt like to some degree without me being out on the court that I was kind of letting the team down, and they understood, but you know, I wanted to be there. I wanted to be a present. I wanted to play a major role in the game, but the other guys came off the bench, held us in there the first, first half, especially Michael. He had a heck of a game, and you know, everything else is history. Now, you hold the key here to these teams returning. Michael said if you come back, he'll come back and fill and so forth. What are your thoughts? Will you come back? Would you take a one-year deal? What will go through your thought process in making this determination? Well, Jim, right, right now, I just have to, you know, let everything soak, soak in. You know, there's a lot of opportunities out there for me, and, you know, I have to look more down the road in my future, but, you know, I don't know. You know, after all this is soaks in and get back and get my back back on track, uh, you know, you never know. Is there a twins of sadness with you, a little melancholy feeling right now that it may be ending? Excuse me? Are you feeling a little sad right now that this could be coming to a close? No, not, not really. You know, we're going to enjoy this and, you know, as long as we, we, we can. You know, uh, as a player right now, I don't feel like it's over. You know, we got a lot of celebration to do, and I'm not really looking forward to next season right now. Final thought, the Utah Jazz and Carl Malone, a spectacular effort. What would your thoughts be toward them? That was great. You know, Carl and uh, John, you know, they're some gutty performers. Uh, what is Hornet Sack, Russell, who's grown and matured and, you know, had a fabulous series. Uh, you know, we take our hats off to this team. The fans here have really came out and made us work hard. Uh, you know, it was, it was a great series. You know, it was an even better series than last series, even though, it, you know, both series in at six games, uh, this, this, this topped it off. Scotty, congratulations. A truly gutsy performance. Thank you. All right, let's go back now to Bob Costas. Thanks, Jim, to back up the accolades offered to Carl Malone by Scotty Pippen. Malone had 31 points, 11 rebounds, and 7 assists in 43 minutes tonight. And even as they could not stop Scotty and Michael from claiming another title, Malone managed to average 25 points and 10 and a half rebounds in the series. We'll talk with Carl Malone when we come back after this from your local station.